Freight rates have fallen slightly in October, making some believe that the worst of the shipping crisis was over. Unfortunately, that hopeful perception didn't last more than a couple of weeks because last week, freight rates rapidly spiked to a new record high. In less than seven days, the benchmark Baltic Dry Index, which measures the movement of the global dry bulk commodities and also shipping prices, shot up by over 16% due to the introduction of new restrictions on the movement of ships worldwide as a precaution to prevent the spread of the new virus strain. The almost $9,000 increase in the Baltic Dry Index signals a rapid change in shipping industry fundamentals brought on by strict measures at ports in China, rigorous surveillance imposed by the government of India, and similar measures adopted by several governments across the globe, including the European Union. The new virus mutant has caused a renewed concern in the shipping industry. Several countries, including China and India, have imposed fresh restrictions. European nations have also restricted travel movement of individual passengers and shipping consignments from affected countries like South Africa. These restrictions have raised fear of container availability and freight rates that have crippled global trade for almost two years. With restrictions in place, port congestion, high freight rates, and container availability may go back to the worst peak, one senior official with a large polymer producer revealed in an interview with Polymer Update. Meanwhile, sticking to a rigid zero-tolerance policy, the Chinese government is imposing a seven-week isolation period for every new shipping crew arriving from abroad. Local reports describe that port operations have been compromised as some Chinese provinces are shutting down ports altogether until every crew member has tested negative for the virus. China is also prohibiting crew changes for foreign crews in order to keep the virus out. Even vessels that have changed their crew elsewhere have to wait for two weeks before they're allowed to enter China. The ripple effect of China's port congestion is impacting several other intra-Asia trade lanes as diverted cargo ships get stuck at tranche shipment hubs in the southeast. According to Peter Sandara, global head of ocean freight for a major cargo owner, due to prolonged waiting times to dock, cargo is simply being dumped in Singapore ports and containers are making the return trip empty. We understand the carriers might be blanking sailings because of power shortages in China impacting export production, but also because of the huge port congestion in the US and Europe, which have disrupted their vessel schedules, Sundara added. Given that the Chinese New Year cargo rush is just around the corner, congestion is about to intensify and the backlog of cargo ships will only get bigger. The tightening vessel capacity we are currently seeing globally is adding even more pressure on soaring freight rates. According to Vessel's Value in its 2021 Port Congestion Report in November, Asia-US shipping rates reached a staggering $130,000 per day, and that's over a 400% increase compared to this time last year. In America, as opposed to what the government has been suggesting in recent weeks, ports are still extremely clogged, especially in California. Just yesterday, the number of container ships stuck outside the port of Los Angeles has reached a new record of 111, breaking the previous record of 108 vessels a month ago. When adding the ships stuck outside the port of Long Beach, that number escalates to almost 200. And on a nationwide scale, at least 265 ships carrying millions of containers are still waiting to dock and unload. Congestion continues to worsen despite efforts to speed up container processing amid a surge in consumer demand for goods ahead of the holidays. In October, the White House announced a shift to 24-7 port operations and threatened to fine companies that left containers on the docks for several days. Since August, 
The administration has announced several steps to address the supply chain crisis, but retailers and grocers keep struggling to keep shelves stocked, while prices continue to rise. Industry experts argue that the measures didn't solve any of the existing problems. In fact, it may have worsened the situation, and issues could persist until 2023. The president was scheduled to address the bottlenecks in a speech to the American people on Monday afternoon, but the White House suddenly canceled the event moments before he was set to deliver them. The speech was scheduled to occur after a meeting with the leaders of 10 major retailers and grocers to discuss the supply challenges during the Christmas holiday season. But apparently, the results presented during that encounter were too concerning to be shared with the public. In the meantime, the size of the logjam continues to hit unprecedented levels. Before the health crisis, the biggest backlog our ports had ever seen was of 17 ships. According to Kip Lutit, head of the Marine Exchange, the fact that we now have hundreds of ships lingering around ports waiting to berth means that delivery delays can stretch from four to eight weeks, depending on the type of cargo. Last month, fines started to be imposed on the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, with companies having to pay $100 a day for every container left on the docks. After a container arrives, companies have three days to move it, if the next step is by rail, or nine days if the next step is by truck. However, industry specialists say these fees will do little to help ease the port jams. The issue isn't about a lack of desire to move the boxes, but a lack of physical space. Explained Corey Birch, VP Solutions Consulting at Slink.io, a global logistics company. According to data released by American Shipper, at the end of November, there were almost 60,000 containers on these ports that had been there for more than nine days and would be eligible for fines. But as Birch highlighted, those fines will simply be passed on to the end consumer compounding inflationary pressures that have already been pushing the price of everything to sky highs. The backlog is also sparking another problem for companies trying to ship goods and customers and stores waiting for those supplies. Cargo theft. Stolen shipments are becoming an increasingly common problem affecting U.S. consumers who are already facing long delays and painful price increases. When cargo finally makes its way out of congested ports, they become an easy target for offenders seeking containers filled with electronics and other valuable consumer goods. The old saying is, freight at rest is freight at risk, outlined Keith Lewis, vice president of CargoNet, a Verisk business which tracks thefts along the supply chain. The company's data found that $5 million worth of products were stolen from California ports last quarter. The executive also mentioned that the rising levels of theft for fleets and businesses mean that ultimately it's consumers that will be the hardest hit this holiday season. Americans are already facing widespread shortages and surging prices, which are making the Christmas rush harder than usual. Anytime that you have a theft or you take away some of the inventory that's going to be out there, you're going to have a shortage on different items, he continued. There's going to be less to choose from, fewer things on the shelves or fewer choices to make when you go out to shop this year, said Lewis. Now, even large corporations that would typically be safe from sudden inflation upswings are warning that they cannot fight with such persistent inflationary pressures. In an interview with CNBC, Siemens Energy CEO Christian Pluch alerted that the industrial world is going to be dealing with higher prices and supply shortages for much longer than expected. He said it is going to be way into 2022 and honestly, my belief is managing the supply chain will be something which will be with us for a long time. Unilever CEO Alan Jope also sounded the alarm, saying that the company was witnessing once-in-two-decade inflationary pressure, saying, We are seeing commodity inflation across really every type of input cost that we have. 
agricultural commodities, petrochemical commodities, paper and board, transport, logistics, energy, labor, all are moving in an upward direction, he said. Last month, the United Nations warned that surging freight rates would be translated into higher prices for consumers early in 2022, with the global import price levels set to increase by 11%. Global consumer prices will rise significantly in the year ahead until shipping supply chain disruptions are unblocked and port constraints and terminal inefficiencies are tackled, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development said in its review of Maritime Transport 2021 report. The current surge in freight rates will have a profound impact on trade and undermine socioeconomic recovery until maritime shipping operations return to normal, said Rebecca Grinspan, the Secretary General. To make things worse, hikes in oil prices, geopolitical conflicts, the worsening health crisis, and broken supply chains have come together to create a potentially devastating scenario for the global food system, a panel on food security heard. These have created a perfect storm for a global food collapse, stressed Fan Schengen, chair of the Academy of Global Food Economics and Policy at China Agricultural University. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization's monthly food price index, global food prices skyrocketed nearly 33% last year, and the latest Goldman Sachs report forecasts that food inflation will likely get worse before it gets better. We are entering some exceedingly difficult times. Sadly, the problems we're facing today are only going to be aggravated in the coming months. We are on the verge of another dark winter, and as our system persistently collapses all around us, we're going to have even more turbulence and chaos awaiting us.